Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Meeples Included, looking at a chess game today from the late Victor Korchnoi. He died earlier this week, but I'm doing it in two different ways. Number one, you don't need to know chess in order to pull out a bunch of ideas from this that are useful to board games. But if you do know chess, you're also going to learn some about strategy and diverse ideas. The main thing, though, that I'm doing with this video is looking at what makes chess such a good game and what board game designers can learn from chess when creating their own games. So a little bit of background on Victor Korchnoi. He was born in 1931 and died earlier this week. He was really a amazing chess player, qualifying for top level tournaments, candidate matches, and the world championship again and again. He defected from the former Soviet Union, leaving his wife and child, unfortunately, behind there, and became really a symbol of a different approach to chess in the West here and opportunities that were available in the West. Wonderful chess player, great spirit from everything that I've ever heard, very uh, entertaining, happy individual and a huge loss to the chess world overall. The game that we're looking at today is a game against his classic rival, Karpov. It was in 1994, and it really shows two very diverse, different ideas going on in a game, and a lot of imbalances. This game is one where white tries to dominate the center, have more room for his pieces, and create some outposts for his knights, while black keeps a pair of bishops and counterattacks that center and then attacks on the king side. So we've got a very unbalanced position that comes forward, not symmetrical pawn structures, the opportunity for each side to implement their own strategies here. Already very early on, we've got two bishops versus two knights. And I was playing this particular game through a few years back, trying to learn the opening from black side, come up with some of the ideas that were involved. And this real f5 move is one that I did not anticipate, and it's one of two moves here that really showed me the opportunity to look at different ideas in this game. It gives up control here of this central square, e5, and allows the knights what looked like a really strong outpost. Karpov jumps on that and starts this maneuvering with his knights to move into the center of the board. But Black is able to kind of lock down the position a little bit and start his own counterattack on the king side, which is going to matter long term. Once we get into a position here where white appears to have won a pawn, the game gets really, really interesting. Technically, white is slightly up in material, but what's going to matter is first how strong or weak these pawns are on each side, and whether black is able to find his own plan in this position. And he does find a plan, which is to attack the king's safety on the king's side to try to hem in his opponent's bishop and to create some long-term threats on the open files that result here. White, though, is not just sitting back passively, but instead creating his own series of threats, including two passed pawns that start to race down the board, threatening to queen. And at this point in the game, I was pretty worried about Black's position. It looks like White's idea of racing some pawns across the board is losing to Black's idea of locking down White's king and making his own threats. And I missed the next move in this game. Take five seconds here, see if you can find the best move for Black, because this one just came out of nowhere for me and is incredible. Here it is, bishop takes f4, and the reason this is such a crazy move is it allows white a second queen and a very unbalanced position here. 
what I didn't realize is that black's king is actually much safer, and once that white queen is ejected, black is the one who gets to make some really powerful threats here and go after that unsafe king. Black has dominated the open file and restricted his opponent's king into the back rank. Black is the one who is in charge making threats. And at this point, white is going to have to give up a queen for a rook because of the lack of safety to white's king. The game at this point is over. White resigns. The fact that black has an extra piece and an extra pawn in a grandmaster game is all it takes to win. So let's look at what ideas we can pull out of this game. And there are two that are really important to me to board games overall. The first is that, as in games like Dominant Species, you need a set of diverse strategies. If each side can implement different strategies, you're not just playing a race where you're trying to do the exact same thing and whoever does it slightly better wins, the game gets so much more interesting, especially if one of those strategies is not inherently better than the other strategies. The ideas that go on create this wonderful play back and forth. The other thing that's really important is that you need a clash of ideas going on. You need to be able to interact with your opponent's plan, try to stifle it while implementing your own plan. Chess is a very interactive game. Every move you must respond to your opponent's threats while also creating your own set of ideas that you are trying to implement. In a board game, one of the things that makes it great is the ability for you to directly interact with your opponent's ideas and cause them trouble. That reaction back and forth is what makes an interesting strategy game. I hope you found this interesting. For more discussion over strategy and board games, please subscribe to the channel. If you've got any suggested topics related to tactics, board games, strategies, please leave them in the comments. I'm always looking for interesting topic ideas for the weekly videos that I'm doing here on Meeples Included. Until next time, choose your moves wisely.